Jane Shoestring Jane, welcome back to my channel. I thought I would do another of my videos, I did one the other day, about small frugal things, small frugal actions that you can take to save a lot of money over time. So they become just habitual, they become little habits, you don't even think about them, they're not much effort and they will save you money over time. So I'll link the first post that I did uh, the other week below. Um, but let's move on to today's suggestions. So my first one would be don't waste water. So in the UK now we're mostly on water meters. Um, it used to be a flat rate. Some people are still on flat rates. I moved over to a water meter when my girls all kind of left home to go to university and whatever. They used to use a load of water, always having baths and showers and just using too much water really. Um, they weren't very conscious of that at all. So when they went, I thought, well actually now is the time. I'll probably save myself money going on a water meter. And I saved loads. I couldn't believe how much water I, how much money I saved on the water bill. And that's because I'm quite conscious of what I use. So um, to, to save water, if you really like a bath, and I do occasionally, and share the bath water if you've got someone else in the house or don't run a really, really deep bath. Generally speaking, I shower and have a short shower and that doesn't use very much water. And the other thing you can do is to collect the wastewater from your bath or sh shower and use it to water your plants outside. You can't hang on to it, that kind of grey water, it will go smelly so you can't store it in your water bath or anything. But you can use it as soon as it's cooled down and save getting the hose pipe out or watering your plants with a watering can. Um, so. I just try not to take our water supply for granted. There are countries where they don't have clean water. We're very lucky. We don't realise that we're very lucky. We don't have to go to a well and collect our water and it, it's dirty water and they wouldn't dream of wasting water when they'd walked two miles up the road to get it. And I remember thinking that when I went camping and just having the act of having to go and collect water does make you appreciate that you've got it on tap at home. So just be aware of it. Um, what else can you do? Don't leave the tap running when you're cleaning your teeth or when you're washing dishes. Don't run, uh, wash your dishes under a running tap. Fill a bowl full. Um, same with me washing your hands. You don't need to keep the water running the whole time. So just little things like that. Just be aware of it and you can save a little bit of money on your water bill. Number two on my list would be don't waste electricity. So the first thing to do is to train your family to become aware of their electricity usage because it's no good you doing all these things and then they leave every light on in the house and that kind of thing. So um, the thing that bugs me in my house is the TV behind us. It's a very old TV. However, it was built so that you can't switch it off unless you switch it off at the plug. It just goes into standby mode and I believe that uses about 60% of what it would use anyway, which is really irritating, isn't it, when we've got a climate crisis going on. And if you're trying to save money on the electricity bill, then anything like that, that it just sits on standby or you can put on standby, just unplug it, turn it off at the plug or turn it off properly if you, if you possibly can and train your family to do the same. When you leave a room, turn the light off, just get into the habit of doing that. If, you've, if you're in a room where you've got lamps, you don't need your main light on and all the lamps on as well. Just have the lamps on or just have the main light on. Um, don't leave your phone chargers on or your laptop charger. Don't just leave it on, uh, plugged in but not plugged into the device because it's still releasing a small amount of electricity all the time. Uh, Justin's mum always switches everything off at the plug when it's not in use. So even things like um, the microwave and the oven and the toaster, she switches everything off at the plug and that's partly for safety and partly because she thinks, you, you know, there's still small amounts of electricity being emitted. And I don't know if that's true or not, but it certainly makes sense from a safety point of view. Um, and that's the main thing is train your family. So lots of kids like to sleep with the light on, but if they're used to not sleeping with the light on, they don't need it on. My kids always wanted the landing light on and we for years slept with the landing light on, but it's not really necessary. And I think they would have got used to it or they could have a very small light, light to begin with maybe. Um, so it's better for you, for your quality of sleep if you sleep in darkness anyway. So um, that can be your argument for not sleeping with a hallway or landing light on. 
so save on electricity. Number three would be to never go shopping, food shopping particularly, without a shopping list. So make a list based on what you've got in the cupboards already and maybe if you make a meal plan, which I would suggest you do, make a list on the meal plan. You can use up things in your in your pantry and in your fridge that need using up first, but always go shopping with a list and Rookie mistake, I've done this before. Don't go out without a pen as well, so you can cross things off your list. So that's really kind of, it's good. You can see what you've got. You're not just sort of randomly chucking stuff in as you go around the supermarket thinking, we might need a bit of this, we might need a bit of that, and end up with loads of stuff you've already got in your cupboards at home. So a shopping list is really a great tool when you're trying to save money. Number four would be to wash your own car. Um, I've always washed my own car, I say always, I usually wash my own car and hoover it as well. But recently I got really busy and it's a pain to, if you've got Archie here because he just barks at the window at you if you're trying to wash your car and I couldn't face it and I hadn't done it for ages. So I sent my daughter out and she paid to get the car washed and it cost 20 quid. And afterwards I thought, oh, that was ridiculous, I could save that 20 pounds and spent it on something better. So wash your own car it doesn't take very long you just get a few basics you can even get some sort of car wax and stuff if you want to be fancy um but basically just hot soapy water is all you need and this big sponge and uh, access to a vacuum cleaner so you can hoover it out um or you know if you don't have those things maybe you live in a flat and it's not really that, that useful you can still go use the car wash and their vacuum cleaner and that would be still cheaper so wash your own car to save a bit of money so the next tip on my list, number five, would be to wear layers, layer up. When the weather starts to get cooler, instead of just immediately putting the heating on, put some extra layers of clothing on. So layers trap the heat and they keep you warm. Put some thick socks on, maybe stick your dressing gown on. That's a good thing. They tend to be quite fleecy, don't they? And they're quite warm. Um, keep some throws in your sitting room so that you can just layer up, really. Um, you could turn the thermostat down a couple of degrees as well. I mean, you can only go so far without and then the house gets too cold because I've tried it and gone too far. Um, but layering up is really useful anyway, and you wouldn't need to put the heating on so high or you wouldn't need to put it on at all. Um, only heat the rooms that you use is the other thing. If you do have spare rooms, spare bedrooms particularly, you don't really use, just turn the radiators off. Why do you need to have them on in a heater room that nobody's using? Um, don't go too far though. We couple of years we did just hardly have the heating on at all it was fairly mild um but because we tend to dry the the laundry indoors as well over the winter we got a lot of condensation and we did develop a real mold problem so i don't want that to happen again so i won't just try and keep the heating off altogether i think that's not actually that healthy so it's a question of balance isn't it so you want the heating on not too much you want to keep your heating heating down but you don't want to develop those other issues either so to save on the heating keep a big pile of throws some jumpers nearby and encourage your family to do that before they stick the heating on and number six on my list and still on the subject of heating um if you possibly can consider insulating your house really really thoroughly there are usually grants available um and we had our roof insulation done as thick as you can and um, also our wall cavities filled about 10 years or so ago but we got it done through a grant with British Gas at the time. Um, I won't mention any particular grants because they're changing all the time and I know the government's been pulling back on some of them to save themselves some money but um, there's still normally something and you can look at your individual energy provider to see what they're offering as well. It's really worth it and even if you you can do that. It's worth also maybe getting some reflective foil to put behind your radiators. We've done that in this room, we've done it in a couple of other rooms downstairs. This was actually a really cold house when we moved in here and it's a lot warmer now and the reflective foil made a massive difference. I was very surprised it's such an inexpensive thing to do. We just went to b and I think it was and bought a big roll of reflective foil and it did about three radiators and that was well worth it. Draft excluders at doors are also good. Um, if you've got a drafty front door, you could consider a nice heavy lined curtain at your front door. That will save um, those drafts and make everything feel a lot warmer. Um, 
you could add linings to your curtains as well, so nice thick linings to the curtains. I did see somebody do just hang another pair of curtains, a smaller pair, inside her main pair. Um, so that's a good idea. So if you can't afford really to do much, you can always pick up curtains in charity shops and maybe you can do that. So that will all add to the warmth, and which means, you know, you save on your heating bill as well. Number seven on my list is to line dry your laundry if at all possible. OK, we don't all live in beautiful, sunny places, but if you do, line, always line dry your laundry. I try to do it as much as I possibly can. Um, as I, I don't have a tumble dryer. I don't possess one. I don't want one. I don't have space in my kitchen and I don't want the expense of running one. And I think it's greener to try and dry my laundry in other ways. So um, this can be a, more of an issue in the winter, especially in the UK. You know, we have very wet winters. Um, so what I tend to do is use dryers inside the, the line, the airers. Um, that you can hang your clothes on. So I have those. I'll put one near the fire or near a radiator. But I also um, invested in a dehumidifier several years ago, a long time ago actually, when we had the previous mentioned condensation mould problem. And I actually we actually got it for that reason, but then discovered it had a drier setting and you can dry your clothes with it which is great. I mean, it's not as quick as a tumble dryer, but it's fairly quick. It stops the house getting full of condensation and it's much cheaper to run than a tumble dryer. Um, but you can also get heated areas, which might be worth investing in. Um, and you can buy kind of covers to go over them, which keeps the heat in. And they're a good investment. I mean, they're, a big one is probably about £100 with a cover. Um, but still cheaper than a tumble dryer, it will last many years and much, much cheaper to run than a tumble dryer. But um, if I can get the, get it on the line, then brilliant, because I love that smell of line dried clothes. They come back soft um, and I just like the look of them blowing in the wind. A bit old like that. Still on the subject of laundry and number eight on my list is to wash your clothes less frequently. I mean, most of us, if we're not kind of labourers or don't do manual work, we don't need to wash things after one wearing, a single wear. Um, I don't know if you're a very sweaty person, you might need to. But things like, you know, trousers and that kind of skirts and things like that, they really don't need washing. Jumpers, every single time you wear them. Socks and knickers and pants and things like that, yes, they, they do, underwear. But other things, you don't have to wash them every single time. It saves on the laundry it saves on things like laundry powder and energy to run your machine but also it makes the clothes last longer so just consider whether you need to wash your clothing as frequently as every single time that you wear your whatever the item is so number nine on my list of small actions that will save you money is to go back to old-fashioned cotton handkerchiefs rather than disposable tissues so obviously this is better for the environment you don't notice the extra cost of just washing a hanky with, with whatever you've got wash in the wash anyway. Um, and I find they're softer on my nose as well if I've got hay fever, which I have at the moment, or a cold. Um, and I've just got this, I think you might have seen this in a recent charity shop haul. I found this little tissue box. So you're supposed to put your cardboard tissue box inside it, but I just used the actual box. And I've just got cotton hankies in here. I don't bother ironing them. What's the point? They're going to get screwed up anyway. But um, yeah, I just keep those handy and use them as I used to use tissues. So that save, doesn't save masses of money, but it saves money over time. And the final thing on my list today would be watch how you drive. So if you drive a little bit more slowly and more smoothly, you can save on fuel consumption. The same with idling don't just sit with your engine on if you're waiting for somebody to come out of a shop or something like that or even if you're sitting at traffic lights for too long turn your engine off it actually saves on fuel um, and you can get lots more tips on how to conserve your fuel on sites like the AA and the RAC so it's worth going to check those out and just save yourself a bit of money on fuel. So I hope you enjoyed my latest list of small frugal actions that you can take to save yourself money over time. And you will notice there is a little green edge to these frugal actions, which I like because, you know, I am very aware, I've mentioned it before, I'm very aware of the environment. I would really like to reduce my impact on the environment. And some of these actions will 
save you money but they are better for for the environment as well and we've got a climate crisis going on so if everybody did them our bank balances would be healthier but maybe our planet would be healthier too so it's really worth cultivating some of these habits i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my channel i'd really appreciate it if you did and turn on your notifications so you know next time i post something new i will see you next time bye for now